When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot. Say, 
some trees in this house. Trustee Tony was a worshiper. He was a worker. He was someone who believed in the word of God. And because I know that to be true, I understand that when he left this place, he knew where he was going. So all of us who are assembled here today owe it to him to give God some praise. Come on now, we owe it to him to give God some praise. We thank God for his witness. We thank God for his service. The truth is, is that we are losing a lot of the wisdom of the church. We're losing a lot of the workers of the church. But the Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the God of the harvest that he would send laborers. And I thank God that he sent Trustee Leroy Tony because he was a laborer, but he was an excellent, excellent man. Amen. Amen. Amen.
23rd Psalm, followed by our New Testament reading from John 14. Psalm 23 says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we go the how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Amen. The word of God is blessed. At this time, we will have prayer by Reverend Tonya Gray. Let us pray. Our Father and our strong God. Lord, we come to you right now, God, before we ask you for anything. God, we come praising you and worshiping you for everything that you've done. Thank you, dear God, for how beautiful today is. Thank you, dear God, for how you have kept each and every one of us through the trials and the storms of our lives. We thank you, dear God, that we were able to be here, God, to witness just how awesome you really are. Father, we don't come here today to funeralize anybody, but God, we come here today to celebrate the life of your servant. We come here, God, thanking you for every time. Thank you, God, for every time he showed up. We thank you, God, for his worship. We thank you, dear God, for his dedication. Thank you for this officer and this gentleman, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for everything, God, that you've done. Father, we know that the family is hurting. We know that tears are rolling down faces. We know, dear God, that somebody's night may not have been as sleepful as it could have been. But, oh, God, we thank you. But, Father, you're setting your word that the be absent from the body is to be present with you, God. And we thank you, dear God, for trusting Tony's presence with you right now, God. We thank you, dear God, for what he meant to us, God. But oh, we thank you, dear God, for what you meant to him. Yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. yes you dear God. That the very works of his life, God, will illuminate in somebody's mind and somebody's heart, God, to let them know that this is how you live. God, we don't just live to be here, God, but we live to come and join you, God. And always thank you, God, for his demonstration, his dedication, but more than anything, his destination. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He gets to lay back in your arms, God. We thank you. Thank you. That he doesn't have to hurt anymore, God. We thank you. Yes, yes, that you received him unto yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Father, the works that he did yes, yes. spoke his own eulogy. Yes, yes. God, 
we're just here to witness. We're just here to witness his final speech. And we thank you, God, that when he opened up his mouth and said, into your hands I commit myself. We thank you, God. Father, we pray, we pray, God, that our lives will exemplify what you have called each of us to do. Father, there's anyone that don't know you, anybody that don't know you, God, we ask you that this service will open up their hearts and their minds, God, to understand and to know that if they want to see, trust me, totally again, they got to go the way that he went. Thank you, dear God, for his election, and thank you not only for his election, but his election was sure. Thank you for every heart that he touched. Thank you for every life that he changed. Thank you for every person that he loved. But God, more than anything, thank you for the service that he rendered to you. Father, you are amazing. You are awesome. And we ask you, dear God, to watch over this family. Those who are struggling, watch over them, God. The friends that he left, watch over them, God. The void, fill it, God. Yes, yes, yes. Father, if you do these things, we will be ever so mindful. We will give your name the praise. praise. We won't rob you of your honor. We will give you the glory. For you are God. And you are God all by yourself. Father, we're just here. This is your service. Let it be whatever you want it to be. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. And my soul says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have a selection. Thank you, God. We're going to have a selection from Reverend Stanley Newsom. Amen. 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 To this beautiful family and those assembled here today, I had the privilege of knowing trusting Tony. Uh, privilege to say that everything that you hear about him today be true. As I have known him, I have known him to be a man of integrity. I've known him to, in fact, be a man, and that is something that is difficult to say nowadays. Uh, he was always straightforward. He always had a kind word. He always spoke of Jesus, and the one thing I've never seen him do is complain. Now, I don't know what he did to the children when they were younger, but I know that my witness of this gentleman was that he never complained. Even when I know there were times he could complain, he never did. Yeah. Um, so if there was never more appropriate words to describe this man, it would be that he didn't complain. So I'd like to share this with you for a moment. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some, some weary days. I can hardly see the road. Yeah, 
were telling me what a fantastic, fantastic person he was. He was my friend. When I say my friend, he was my friend. We don't have a whole lot of friends in this world. But he was my friend. And he was the best person you could ever meet. He was the first person you saw every Sunday. He got there 6.30 in the morning to open that church. Had that big smile on his face. Um, and he did everything that we asked him to do within that church. As some of the ministers have said, he cleaned the church. He cared for the church. And when we put him at that door, it was probably one of the best things that we've ever did along with Sister Carol, it started off our service because it let the people in on a good note. They welcomed the people into that church and that is just the most important thing that you could have in a church is getting the people in the church and getting the people into the spirit. And at that church he was a greeter, he was our security guard before we got security. He was the security guard at that church. Amen. He did not play <laughs> at that front door, but he was he had the ability to manage that door where different people came up to the church. And at one time, a lot of different people came up to the church, people who was in need. He gave people the money right out of his pocket. Yes, he did. He would see people, he would put people, that, we had a bus stop right next to our church. He would put people on the bus. Yes, he, he would give them that money and put them onto the bus. Yes, he, he was able to keep people away from the pastor, um, away from me. <laughs> um, and he was just able to know. There was different people that came up that would be beggars, borrowers, different things, and he was able to manage all of that and keep it smooth. So we just, we just loved him for that. Um, he was an excellent trustee, and he was organized. He did not play in that trustee room. So. Trustee Wilson's over there when he came in there, he was organized. He had all his 20s and his 10s and everything lined up, but he was he was ready. So, um, but I can go on and on and on uh, about the things that he's done. His work speaks for himself. His work speaks for itself. Um, so to the family, continue to look for the look to the Lord in all things, seek his face at this time. Um, Brother Tony will be truly missed. Nobody, nobody can replace him for the things that he did. He will never be replaced. God bless you all. God bless the family. Rest in peace, Brother Tony.
I told you to tell you yesterday about the uh, the Valentine, but that's that's our secret. Amen. But we he gave to so many people at that church and in that community. And so we can only thank God for his life. As we have been serving you, we will continue. It's not a cliche. I will continue to keep you lifted up and keep the family lifted up. Love y'all. God bless you. I would have to speak this morning, Amen. but I'm ready to give a word for Tony. Amen. And I want to be brief, but I can't be too brief, because I want to tell you a little bit about what Tony meant to our church, as a trustee, to my family, and then uh, there's a lesson that he taught me. First of all, everyone has already talked about his giving. I know about every part of Tony's giving. He gave to everyone. I know about Miss Sarah how he gave to her about his brother. He, his, he was taking care of his brother, and my brother was taking care of our brother. They lived right down the street. He's, he was the patriarch of the family, so I know this well. He, um, he led us. He, he led our trustee boy. Mm -hmm. When something was needed, he was the first one, always. He gave, like they said, it was no job, too big or too small. He picked up the trash and he gave his money. I want that point made because he did it all. No job too big, too small, no one he would not help. He did everything that he thought God would want him to do. Truly, he tried to live his life as a servant of God. There was one thing that really impressed me. I knew Ernest King long before I met Tony because Ernest King used to come to Bible study. And she stood up one evening and she was praising God and she praised God for her husband. And she said to us, she said, my husband is my best friend. And I said, well, that's a good thing to say. That, that means a lot to say that your husband is your good friend. And she went on to say many things about why her husband was her best friend. And a few months after Ernest Jean had gone on to glory, Tony and I was sitting on the trustee role, and um, we, him had been signed, and he's, I said, I shared that with him, how she had told me he was her best friend. And he said, Pat, he said, um, you don't know what good friends we were. And he said, Pat, he said, through the years, I would mess up and come back. And I would mess up and come back. And I would mess up time and time again and come back. And I said to him, Tony, I would have laid you out. I would, you could have come on messing up. And I think he was talking about, not uh, straight, but messing up money. Things that men do in marriages. And he, and he would mess up and come back, and mess up and come back, and mess up. I said, Tony, I would have laid you out. You would have kept messing up my money and doing all that kind of foolishness. I would have laid you out and, and, and set you straight. And he said to me, he said, Pat, each time, not one time, but he said, each time that I messed up, she said to me, honey, what do we, what do we need to do to get ourselves straight? Mm -hmm. That impressed me so much as a husband and a wife. There are not many couples that would have that kind of relationship. And he told me, he said, Pat, she would say it over and over again. What do, what do we, what do 
He had messed up, but she would say, what do we need to do to get ourselves straight? That told me what a husband and a wife are, are supposed to be. Now, those of us who know scripture, know what the scripture says about husbands and wives in glory, we know what it says. But I do know this, with all my heart, I believe that they're together because they both love the Lord. God bless you. Family, we're here for you if you need us. Let's set our minds from this day forward to live a life. 
Please. Please and God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, God. In order to live a life pleasing God, Levi was an example for us. He took on the role of a servant like Jesus. See, Jesus was a servant. And Uncle Leroy took the same role as a servant. And I watched him. And I asked him a question one day. I said, you know, over the last 25 years, all me and Uncle Leroy talked about was Bible. He become a scripture connoisseur, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the more we get heated up on the phone, out of the California EMO, the more I get heated up with the scripture, the more he starts celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would tell him, girl, the girl, I'll say up to you. Yeah. You must be born again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is what Jesus told me to David. He said, he must be born again. Yes, got to be. Of the water yes, sir. and of the spirit. You can't enter the kingdom of heaven without being born again. That which was born of the flesh is flesh. Amen. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. I say unto thee, yeah, yeah, yeah. you must be born. Must be born. I'm so glad <laughs> that old people was born. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. So I don't have to celebrate right now. Yes, sir. So you might come celebrate. Yes, sir. Uncle Leroy loved everybody. 
Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he showed us his love. See, we, we love his word. And God said for us not to only love the word, but love the deed also. Yes, Come on. See, how do you keep telling me? And then when I have a problem, you ain't there for me. But every time I had a problem, I believe I was there for me. He came to get me out of jail when I was 13. And that's what he told me. He said, you know what? You know what? I ain't coming to get you no more. Come on. Come on. I sound just like this. Y'all ain't got to say You know what? You know what? I ain't coming to get you no more. Come on, man. And you better, and you better know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just celebrating your life. Because when a man dies, the question is, shall he live again? And Job said, I'm going to wait till the change. Somebody said, change from the fall of us. I'm just telling y'all what I believe what he wanted me to tell you. Prepare yourself. Live a life pleasing to God. Amen. I was up here like, wait a minute. That's Lee Moy Tun. From the white suit. <laughs> And the obituary. Amen. It's okay. It's okay to celebrate God. It's okay. It's okay to celebrate God. It's okay because when you die in Christ, when you die in Christ. Amen. You're going to die, but the question is, which you going to die? And then when you resurrect, what you going to resurrect then? Amen. Say peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Uh, I too learned Leroy Tony, trustee Leroy Tony for a very long time. And uh, I was a rogue doorkeeper. I wasn't on the committee, but I spent many of my mornings on Sunday with him at the door with Sister Diane, Sister Betty, um, just anyone who was on that committee. So I enjoyed my time. I watched him. Be the perfect gentleman. He made sure everyone got up the steps, the elderly. And as you say, he waited for everyone to get on the uh, mobility. At the end of the day, he didn't leave that door until all of that was done. And when I worked with the children, he was always checking to make sure everyone was safe and you know, that we did what we needed to do. And if I needed any help or if anyone needed any help. And he was pretty much named many of these things, mentor, Caregiver, custodian, security, sergeant at arms. <laughs> Many of you don't know he's the bank depositor. I see that little car coming and going up and down Emerson Avenue. <laughs> I knew where he was coming from. He was the gopher for the breakfast runs between uh, 8 o'clock service and uh, Sunday school at 11 o'clock. We all know he was the doorkeeper. He was a cheerleader. He'd be out there in that hole by himself and he'd be clapping and uh, cheering on the children or anyone, you know, who had anything to do, um, uh, whether in their personal life or in their spiritual life. Philosopher. He and I had a lot of conversations at that door, <laughs> as well as the great debater and poet. Mm -hmm. He was a backup singer for the choir. He'd be out there singing those songs. <laughs> uh, faithful servant, of course. Trustee. And most of all, uh, Christian. But the list is endless, and I'm sure I've missed some things that you all um, know about him that I may not or don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> but uh, I just want to make sure, you know, everyone, what everyone said, it is exactly true. 
and we all had witnessed it. And I mean, he loved his family. I got to meet his niece through one of his mentoring um, um, situations where we were talking about some kids at the church who went to the school that she was at. And um, he, we talked about you a lot. I would always ask him how you were, and he just he kind of suggested, tell me all the things you were doing, so um, keep on doing them. But at this time, I had been um, appointed the task, and actually it's an honor and a privilege to read the uh, various acknowledgments and citations for Trustee Tony. Um, there have been many, as you would imagine, from the various um, prayers, notes, <coughs> expressions of comfort, um, accolades mostly <laughs> from many of his friends, uh, church uh, members, organizations, auxiliaries, ministries, um, and community and civic organizations. So it, what I will do is just basically read those that express that from any um, of the individuals. And basically, some people touch so many lives in kind and loving ways. They leave us lasting memories that shine upon our days. May God who sees your grieving heart and hears each tender prayer be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. Leroy was an awesome, good, God-fearing man. He was very dependable and caring. He left behind a legacy as a caregiver as well as generous individual. He will be sorely missed. Rest in heaven, my good man. The scripture reads, he takes care of his people like a shepherd. He gathers them like lambs in his arms and carries them close to him. And that is from Isaiah 40, 11. Strength, comfort, peace, hope from above. And this is from the Social Security family. May the light of God's life, love, embrace you during this difficult time. Promises of God, comfort, and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. John 11, 25, 26. <clears throat> God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that he might live through him. 1 John 4, 9. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. John 14, 27. And this comes from the women's ministry. Dear family, Brother Tony was such a special man. He was respected and loved by so many. He was wise and kind, always lending a helping hand. It would be impossible to forget Brother Tony. May God bless you all. It's sad to think you've lost someone so special. And though we can't know all you're going through, we want to tell you that we care and hope that loving memories, memories of all you shared will help to comfort you. A note to encourage you. As we travel through life, paths are not always easy, nor water still. Yet, when the storms beat the loudest, God in love draws near and whispers, I am here. Praying for you always. Colossians 1 and 3. The Lord will send his angels to charge over you and keep you in all your ways. May the peace of God be with your family and celebrating a beautiful life. This comes from the Christian Memorial Church, the board and congregation, Chairman Ron Caldwell, praying that you'll be filled with happy memories and surrounded by love. At this time, I will read the citations. Okay. Resolution from the Christian Memorial Church. Church resolution of respect for Trustee Leroy Tony. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He will go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. 
We are in place in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Trustee Leroy Tony, the officers and members of New Christian Memorial Church in Baltimore, Maryland, feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family during the passing of Trustee Leroy Tony. We commend you to him who know best and will always do right. You have our sincere praise. Whereas Trustee Leroy Tony was a devoted, loyal man who loved the Lord, a very independent person, he was a dedicated trustee here at New Christian Memorial Church who would perform any task without asking. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this scripture. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalms 23, 4. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives to the, to the family. We know your loss is deep, and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that his, this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on this 12th day of April, 2021, from the office of sirs and members of New Christian Memorial Church, Baltimore, Maryland, Ronald Caldwell, Deacon of Board of Directors. In memoriam, Leroy Tony, I, Brandon M. Scott, Mayor of the City of Baltimore, do hereby extend my heartfelt sympathies to the friends and family of Leroy Tony. At this difficult time, please know that my thoughts and prayers are with you and hope the love and support from those closest to you provide comfort in the challenging days ahead. And this is from Brandon Mayor, Brandon Scott Mayor, Baltimore City. from the state of Maryland. Be it known, the citizens of Maryland offer this memorial tribute to the memory and life achievements of a beloved Marylander and extend our heartfelt sympathy to the family of Leroy Tony. This respectful expression of condolence to be presented on this 11th day of April, 2021. And this comes from Governor Larry Hogan and Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford, as well as the Secretary of State of America. And Brother Leroy Tony will definitely be missed, but not forgotten. God bless everybody. Life Reflections. Celebration of Life. Trustee Leroy Tony was born on November the 6th, 1942, in Baltimore City to the late workman in Geneva Tony. On March the 18th, 2021, God decided to bring his most faithful servant home. He attended Baltimore City schools growing up, and as a young adult, Leroy worked various jobs. He started at A.B. Dick in 1969 as a truck driver and by 1972 became the shipping and receiving supervisor until 1989 when the company merged. He worked at Ace Binding Company from 89 until he retired in 1996 to take care of his wife Ernestine. Thank you, Lord. He married Ernestine, the love of his life, on August 18, 1973, and they shared a wonderful and devoted life together. They both were dedicated members of New Christian Memorial Church. Leroy was a published poet, collector, and patron of the arts who loved to travel. When it came to sports, Leroy was as big of a fan as you can get, especially for the NBA and NFL. Throughout his life, Leroy was a caretaker for his wife, brothers, sisters, and various family members. Leroy's wife, Ernestine, and son, Jerome, preceded him in death 
as well as his brothers Benjamin and Vernon, and sisters Bernice and Rosemary. He lives to cherish his memory, his grandson Quincy, sister Ada, brother Morris, daughter-in-law Tonya, and two brothers-in-laws, Medical and Robert, special devoted nieces, Azalea, Gloria, Lavinia, nephews Benjamin, Charles, Keith, Kevin, and Andre, and Renard. Also to cherish his memory, our devoted cousins Sarah, Lewis, Dolly, Kevin, supportive caretaker John Brown, and a host of family and friends who will always remember him as a favorite son and the patriot of the family. Athletes, modern ancient Greek festival. Athletes, oh athletes, where should we be? In Athens, Greece, so everyone can see? We are here to represent our country's best. We'll win the games to put our strength and skills to test. We'll be running, swimming, and jumping. Some will be fouling and bumping. The days will be long and our bodies will be strong. We will be praying that our games will not go wrong. We are placed in our lanes with no time to waste. A shot from the gun will start our run. Bursting out of our blocks like a human bolt. Knowing seconds later, it will be no joke. First, second, or third, it will be heard. The officials will approach the winners. This you will remember. The winner will hold the gold. Now the story is told. Flags will fly very high, and you will see the reason why. Day after day, you can hear people say, there's a superstar among us today, Leroy Tony. Amen, amen. Oh, I've learned 
Everybody trying to find everything else. I'm just trying to get to Jesus. When I see Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I had the honorable task of eulogizing um, someone who I call trusty Tony. But the reality is anybody that know me know that I went to New Christian and created my own family. I grabbed mamas, I had aunts, I had cousins, I had dads, I had papa, I made my own family. And Leroy Tony was like my uncle. That one that you can tell stuff to. And you know he was going to get you, but you tell him anyway, because he was going to reward you after he got you. Amen. Just for a minute, I'm, I promise I'm not going to be before you long. Bishop actually preached the eulogy, and God bless you, sir. But I want to just preach from the theme just for a moment. My work speaks for me. Amen. Somebody tell somebody, let my work speak for me. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter number four. Second Timothy chapter number four. Starting at verse number six says this. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. Mm -hmm. Let my work speak for me. Family death is one of those things that many of us find hard to understand. Shocking and sometimes unnerving. But I've come to understand in my own life that even though death is devastating, each of us at some point in our existence will have to deal with the loss of somebody that we love. Here it is, the Apostle Paul in the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Timothy sits down and put pen to parchment to prepare Timothy for his death. Timothy, a young man that Paul considered family. And a matter of fact, Paul called Timothy his son in the ministry. Timothy was somebody, Timothy was somebody that Paul knew that once I die, Timothy is going to be affected. And because he knew Timothy was going to be effective, Paul said, I need to prepare him yeah. so that what happens doesn't crush him. Yeah. And I need somebody to understand that every now and then there are some things that can happen in our lives that can crush us. But the word of God will give us all of the encouragement that we need if we just trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. But in all of our ways that we just acknowledge him, God will direct our path. Watch this. Yes, Paul says I need to pause for a moment mm -hmm. so that I can help Timothy to understand not the, the not my disappointment in the situation, yes, but I need him to understand the importance of living a life that prepares you for death. Mm -hmm. And here it is in this set of scriptures, the apostle Paul sits down, he put pen to parchment, and he tells his son Timothy. He says, Timothy, I don't want you to mourn me. To the point that it stopped you from living. Yeah. He says, Timothy, you can grieve me, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to get burned with me. Come on. He says, so Timothy, I need to show you in my resume. <laughs> Everybody sitting here has a resume. Come on, Some of our resumes is going to say we was nothing but hell races. Because <laughs> no matter what's going on, you just like a bunch of hell. Some of us in our resume is going to say we were caregivers. Mm -hmm. Because of the gift that God placed in us, we got to help somebody. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Paul's resume shows us that Paul was determined. Paul was dedicated. And Paul had a destination. Yeah. Walk with me in the scripture for a moment. In the sixth chapter, in the sixth verse, Paul says, listen, Timothy, I am ready to be offered. Yeah. And I don't know about anybody else, but you need to be ready to be offered to God. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but your life has to be lived in a way that you know that when my time coming, when my number come up, I am ready to be offered. I'm not going to leave anything on the table. I'm not going to leave anything undone. I'm not going to let you have to do anything for me. My work is going to speak for me. Yeah. Paul says, with mm. everything that I've done in my life, Everything that I've, I've had to conquer, Paul says, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to be off. Mm -hmm. 
preach. Mm -hmm. Go on, preach. Paul said that I'm ready. Uh huh. To get out of here, I'm ready. To go on and check the seconds of eternity, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. To see how long eternity is going to be. Paul says I'm ready. Preach now, preach. Paul says I know that the season of my life is over. Uh huh. Tell me, I need to be paid. And the level of reality is, each one of us is going to depart this place. Yes. I don't care how many calendars you have.
Because when you focus on Jesus, when you focus on the cross, Paul says the last thing I need you to understand, Timothy, he says I did not do this for nothing. He says because Timothy, after I fight and after I finish and after I stay focused, he said Timothy laid up for me as a crown of righteousness that I'm going to get from Jesus. He said Timothy, I'm not going to get golden. I'm not going to get silver. I don't care about the bronze. He said Timothy, there is a crown that's laid up for me. I'm going to have something when I get to heaven that I can throw down at the feet of Jesus. He said I'm not going to have an empty hand. He said there was a crown of righteousness. Is there anybody here that can honestly say that when you leave this life, when your life is over, that the work that you've done can speak for you and you will have a crown of righteousness? Trust the Tony was a fighter. Yes, it was. When they got the shooting up churches in North Carolina, yeah. Trust he told me, grab whatever he had to grab. He stood at the door. He said, the rain fell. Trust he told me, said, you want to walk up in this church any old kind of way. You're not going to do any old kind of thing. I done seen him stop people at the door with brown bags. He said, you got to get out of here. I'm standing by myself when I'm afraid for what the Lord told me to help me. Trusty Tony, even when he was sick, was still picking up a broom, sweeping around the church. When he was sick, he was still checking on the sound. When he was sick, he was making sure that the money got the body. When he was sick, he was still giving and trying to work. He says, I am a finisher. And then Trusty Tony said, I need y'all to get focused.
fact that he was a fighter. Mm. And then think about the fact that he was a finisher. Yeah, yeah. And then remember that he was always focused mm. on the cross. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Family, mm. if there's anything we can do to help you to get through the struggles, to get through your hard times, yeah, yeah. to get through your difficult moments, we will do what we can do to the best of our ability. Yeah. But when it gets harder, yeah. and the people stop calling, yeah. and the chicken is gone after the repays, <laughs> and nobody is asking how you're feeling, there is a man by the name of Jesus that if you have a little talk to him, a 
He's so- 